So <clears throat> this is the last class because we start back in the dojo next Wednesday. So thank you all for being here. And what I'd like to just give you something to contemplate when we go into our meditation and then we can take it into the breakout sessions is how do you listen? Do you listen in order to confirm what you already think? Or do you listen to discover something new? Or do you listen and not even listen, but try to think of a response to say as you're li half listening? I say that because uh, I've done that many times, but I'm trying to train myself to listen to discover and people tend to think you know you know when when I'm listening they start either oh yeah yeah I agree with that or no 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 I, I disagree with that but you know agreement and disagreement they're just concepts that lead to theories and it's really not discovering you know when you agree or disagree you're just you're just feeding your reactive patterns, you know, that you already have. And, and we tend to uh, like that a lot. <laughs> so I just want to bring that up because, you know, when we, when, when, uh, when Curtis Sensei has these classes, you know, on Sunday, he's always asking people for questions. And, you know, you've, you, you've probably realize that it's pretty much the same people asking questions and he's always hoping that somebody new will ask a question because he wants to lead them down a path of discovery rather than people you know reiterating I agree with you sensei or or uh, yes I I have this aspect of this uh, uh, that I'd like to recite so you know when we, when we talk about the practice that we're doing, it's really, you're really discovering and unlearning. And that unlearning, you know, is everything that feeds your patterns, you know, because that's what uh, we need to do. You have to have a willingness to unlearn. And that goes to proper listening. So with that, you know, we'll do some meditation. So go ahead and uh, sit up straight. Gently close your eyes. Deep breath in. And exhale. So, a topic of listening. What do you guys think about this? Is everyone a perfect listener, a good listener? Hello, Sensei. Hello, Sensei. Oh. Uh, who's that, Lucky or Jack? Lucky. That was Lucky. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, Lucky. Go ahead, uh, Lucky. Uh, well, what I talked about was, I, I think I'm a better listener than I am a talker. Uh, sometimes I feel like <clears throat> it's easier for me to lend an ear than it is for me to lend any advice. Uh, but I found that uh, in most cases, whenever somebody's talking to you or anything like that, sometimes they just need somebody to listen, and they don't necessarily need advice or anything like that. <clears throat> and uh, something that I've really taken to heart, which was something I heard a while ago, which was uh, most people in the world, when they're having a conversation, they're only listening to know when it's their turn to speak. And ever since I heard that, I was like wondering if I was doing the same thing or uh, in, in what ways I could uh, reduce the amount of times that happens if I do that. So it, it really made me kind of like self-analyze my actions and just how, like how I was listening to people. And I, I'm just working on bettering myself as a listener and who knows, maybe eventually I'll be good at giving advice too, but for now I'll just be 
as good a listener as I can be. Well, there's no getting good at giving advice. That's something you should never do. Trust me on that. <laughs> That's something you should never learn to do because it's it's a rabbit hole you don't want to go down. But listening, yes. You can always learn more from listening than you can from talking. Yeah, we, we, we brought that up, the, the uh, advice giving thing. Yeah. That, that's funny. So Fincher, you chimed in. Yeah, I did. I just wanted to, uh, in our discussions, the one thing that I that came to mind is that um, in in this consideration of how you listen, it's it's a great exercise. It's a great uh, tool for training, just like Aikido. It's, you know, when, when you when you can actually um, start looking at the layered aspects. I mean, everybody gave different uh, examples of what might happen when you're listening. And, you know, listening um, when, when you're waiting to say something or listening when you're negating what they have to say or listening uh, because they don't really want a solution. They just want to, uh, you know, just, let go, they just want to release. So all of these levels, you know, it goes, they're, they're multi-levels that you can actually define and realize as, at, if you take this matter under consideration. So like Aikido, you know, it has so many layers that we were really appreciating the, the value of this, uh, of this issue. That was what uh, came to my mind. You know. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, <clears throat> and it, also it comes up is when you're in a discussion, uh, are you a driver of a conversation or do you hang back and let the other person direct the conversation? You know, that's a, another aspect of, of when you're having these, the dialogue, but yeah, very good. Hello, Sensei. Yes. Hey, um, well, we had a great conversation. It was a really, I mean, if this is gonna be the last Zoom class, it was a, a great one to end it on. So thank you, Fincher and Ilaria. Um, but yeah, our conversation, like Fincher kind of said, is, is it kind of centered around uh, listening in conversation and you know what what tactic you employ when you're kind of having a conversation with somebody and um, I think there's like as far as I can tell there's like two main tactics especially like that I employ when I'm listening to somebody and Fincher brought up it's kind of what made me think of this is he's shared that his um, his strategy is to kind of like listen to find the meaning behind what they're saying to give them kind of a solution to what they might be talking about instead of just listening to what they're saying, listening to what they're trying to communicate. And that kind of problem solving focused aspect of listening is kind of like what Lucky said, listening to give advice or just listening to absorb what they, they say, you know, as the other tactic. And there's really like, there's an appropriate time for both of those. And, um, you know, like, like the, the, Example I thought of is like if somebody were to, you know, share trauma with you, for example, you wouldn't necessarily want to give them solutions, right? It's, it's, it's more helpful to just kind of listen to them and absorb what they're saying, you know, but on the flip side of that, if somebody comes to you and they're just complaining, you know, oh, I've got a headache, uh, my back hurts, my, you know, work was horrible today. You know, it's kind of you can indulge them by just listening and, and not giving them advice, or you can kind of like try and, you know, point out, oh, you're just complaining. Why don't you do this instead? You know, um, so that's just kind of what I was thinking. Thanks for letting me share. Yeah, no problem. And I would say instead of trying to give advice, ask open ended questions. 
open-ended questions allows them to solve their own problems because mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, you ain't solving anybody's problems. <laughs> you can only solve your own. <laughs> right. Um, can you give us an example? Give us an example where you've um, given somebody an open-ended question. So how does this make you feel, Lynn? You know, that's, that's a very common, how to, you know, it, attach it to an emotion. Wow, you sound really upset. What triggered that? You know, it, 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 th those kinds of things, asking about themselves allows them to give you a kind of a release. Of, they, they can release. Yeah. And could I just ask, Sensei, what you mean by advice? Because in, in my head, that yeah. advi advice is kind of like that, what you just said. Anyway. Oh, what, what do you mean as advice? Well, when I think of advice, it, it is kind of like what you just stated, right? The kind of open-ended question to help them figure out what they need to do, not necessarily a closed statement of um, action. So I just wondered right. what you mean by advice. Well, you know what you should do, Jack? That's a kind of, you know what you should do? <laughs> well, you know what I do? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's when I think of people giving advice. That's, you know, them telling you how to do things so that you, you figuring out the problem. You're the problem solver. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to solve this problem. Oh, they've got this going on. Okay, this is how I'm going to save the day. Wow, I'm such a great friend. You know, that's, that's, that's what I think of. Them. You know, when people, when people start talking, they'll be like, they'll listen and they're going, oh, I, I know how I can figure this out. I can, I can solve this. That's what I mean. Okay. So, anyone else? Hi, Sensei. Mm -hmm. Just to go along with what Jack and uh, Fincher Sensei were saying, part of, I guess, what we kind of talked about was part of listening is determining, trying to figure out the intent of why the other person is talking. Like they said, you're listening, you're like, okay, are they talking to vent? Are they talking because they want advice? Uh, is this some other type of conversation where we're getting to know each other, et cetera? So it's, yeah, you just kind of adapt to what the person's giving you and looking for like the reason why they're saying what they're saying. And another thing I brought up at the very beginning was just, um, the incessant monologue in our heads when we're alone translates to when we're speaking to someone because it's such an ingrained habit. So that's where the listening to yourself, listening to your own thoughts when you're talking to someone comes from. So yeah, that's, that's a real habit and I'm definitely guilty of that. And another good habit you could, you could start, Alaria, is listening to what you're saying as you're saying it because then you're gonna that will bring you to circumstances where you're like oh my god i just sounded like my mother or oh my god <laughs> i am reciting something i just heard you know it's is this is this coming from me or is this coming from a reactive pattern that's in my you know how i operate you know your modus operandi so yeah, that's another really good tool actually, is to listen to what you're saying as you're saying it. Mm -hmm. And another thing is how do you listen when you come to class? You know, not just to other people in direct conversation in your day to day. I know you do that more, but when you come to class, how do you, do you come to, to you know, check your boxes? Oh yeah, I've got that, yeah. Sensei just, oh yeah, I'm doing, ooh, this one I'm not doing. I gotta work on this one. Yeah, check the box here. You know, is that how you're listening? Or are you listening with an open, you know, to, to absorb the truth as, as a, a connection with the student and the teacher? So, yeah, very good. Anyone else? I think that only leaves John and I. <laughs> So oh, well, Lynn really hasn't talked. She's just only asked questions. Oh, all right. Should, did, should I go or was she raising her hand? No, no, no. You can go, Lily. Okay. Sorry. Um, yeah. I, um, I kind of mentioned that I like to think that I listen with my whole body. 
and there was a reason for this. I just told him that um, my older brother, Chris, you know, he'd traveled the world. He was in the military and stuff. So we we're always in a different time zone. So one time way back, he said something to my mother about Lillian always is amazingly calling at the wrong time. <laughs> and she told him, you know, Chris, when somebody calls you, they need to hear your voice at that moment. They need to connect with you. And that stuck in my head, you know, and, um, and so I always, whenever I was sitting with someone, even though, you know, I tend to joke around a lot and be silly, uh, people are always surprised at how much of the conversations I remember. I don't remember a whole lot of other things, but I remember conversations because I really do want to connect with that person. That time is so important to me. I love people. I love my family. I love my friends, love strangers. Um, and, and I also mentioned, you know, that there was a good wake up call this last two years on how fast things can change. You know, so it's even more important that we really pay attention to those around us. And um, I also think this is a great class to end on. And I think you must be a really good manager. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't know, but thank you. Uh, yeah, it's it's interesting that you say that. It's it's uh, it reminds me of like you know when somebody reaches out to you you have not talked to in a while and you're like wow it's so good to hear your voice, you know wow like I most recently had a high, a college friend who I was roommates with in college he's a he's a big time pilot for Southwest Airlines now. And we were college buddies and he reached out to just, he just called me out of the blue. I'm looking at my phone. I go, oh my God, who's he going? Wow. You know, and I'm like, hello. And he, he was, it was just like, we'd never, uh, you know, never been separated. We were just like, you know, immediately gelling in the conversation with, he's asking, you know, how my kids are, I'm asking how his kids are, you know, that kind of thing. It was really fun. And yeah, listening to your whole body and, you know, it resonates with, you know, uh, shin in Japanese means not only your head, but your heart and listening with your one point and or as Curtis Sensei often said about Toy Sensei, listen like your one big ear, you know, if we're talking about body parts and yeah, just that that whole, you know, embracing of the person when you talk. Isn't that interesting? If, if you think of it that way when you're talking to somebody, you're embracing them with your, with your, you know, key. We often, you know, Suzuki's something with you must hold people, you know, you keep the Ruma. And, uh, but if you do that with just conversation, think about that, you know, think about how you can cover someone with your whole mind body when you're talking. So yeah, very good, very good, Lynn. Good observation. Uh, John, Lynn? John is- Yeah, I can go. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, that's something about like, I think the training that I like the most is, um, you know, listening is kind of this um, is about paying attention and paying attention is like making sure you're connected right to that person or that thing. And as you're more settled and more um aware you're you're paying attention you're listening more and i just i don't know that's one thing about aikido that i think is awesome that translates physically and mentally and everybody i think added um what i kind of wanted to say just a little in little parts so um that's all i have to add how do you listen john oh like, i'm a terrible to listener even, at, even to your even to the people in the in your church yeah i mean well they don't really um ask me anything, so i don't i normally don't get asked any questions like most most of the congregation um are kind of like they're set in their way so they're they don't really ask uh, a bunch of questions only once in a while i'll have uh, someone new come in and ask um so and then I, i'll i'll listen and give them a response that i understand is part of what they're asking about okay 
Yeah. I have a question, John. Do they, instead of asking, do they tell? Um, a little bit of both sometimes, you know? Yeah. Cause it's like, they, they know, they want to share what they know. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Lynn, Curtis. Well, yeah, it, we, we had a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, I felt like, uh, you know, it's, it's like training, being a good listener. Uh, mm -hmm. And the, the, I feel the more I train, um, you know, the more aware I become and I catch myself, you know, passing judgment or dismissing somebody or, you know, um, you know, waiting for my turn to, to, to interject and, and just kind of shake it off and yeah, just try to be in my one point. Right. Yeah. But, but it's hard. Yeah. And, and you brought up the, uh, the conversation you said in a conversation, right. At, uh, and you're talking, you know, you know, relative to listening, who drives the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you a driver of a conversation? Lynn? I, I like to, you, you know, what, what I love to do is, um, strangers, whatever, I want to know what's going on, right. what's going on. And, and it's not out of being nosy or gossipy, but it's just like, you know, tell me, you know, what's new and exciting in your life. And I love meeting tourists because they're happy to, to talk to somebody, you know, a, like a local person. And I, I tell you in one minute, I can get their whole life story. Right. And that is when I am the most in tune. Oh, nice. Getting somebody's life story. Where do you live? What do you do? You know, uh, just, right, right, right. So very good. When mm -hmm. I think of that, I, it's very interesting. <laughs> now you can apply that to class. That type of openness. So yeah, good conversation. I really enjoyed everybody's responses. It was very enjoyable. And this Friday nights have always been very enjoyable for me. I've learned a lot. Uh, and uh, you've helped me with that. Um, Tuesday, this past Tuesday, was Suzuki Sensei's birthday. He would have been 105. And I recently came across something he wrote. At least it says he wrote it. Um, it it's a Word document that I have. But I want to read it because this is something you could never really say in a normal class, but I'll share it with you guys. And it's called Some People. And in quotes, it says, in, and in conclusion, some people are like wheelbarrows. They need to be pushed. Some people are like canoes. They need to be paddled. Some people are like kites. If you don't keep a string on them, they'll fly away. Some people are like kittens, contented only when petted. Some people are like balloons, full of hot air and ready to burst. Some people are like footballs. You can't tell which way they will bounce next. Some people are like neon lights. They keep going on and off. And some people, I would like to add, are like a good gold watch. Solid gold, open face, and full of good works. And I, I just thought that was very interesting that he had he had written that. I don't know when, but I wanted to share it and uh, honor him on his uh, his uh, birthday on Tuesday. So thank you all very much. Domo arigato gozaimashita. Thank you, Sensei. Domo arigato And see you guys. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. Will there be class on Sunday? Is that continuing or not? Yes, Sunday class will continue. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Bye.